And of course, we are going to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks, who fired Adrian Griffin. Can't say I was surprised, Tommy. No, no. What, um, so, so they're, the Bucks are currently second in offensive rating. They're 21st in defense, 10th in net. They were fourth in defense last year. Do you think that is the primary reason for the switch, or is there more at play? Um, well, first of all, I, I would say this. Early in the season, I, w- I had a game, first in-season tournament game, Knicks at Bucks. So doing my prep work, I'm watching film, going through games, and it was striking to me, literally striking. I, I remember just pausing it so many times and wanting to punch my laptop uh, at their defensive schemes. They finally got, it was the first game that they put Lopez back in a drop, and they finally got Lopez back in a drop. I don't want to speculate here. I just can tell you from what I know. Uh, the players never felt comfortable with the schemes. And it wasn't just defensively. I think offensively, they still haven't maximized what they can be. And I think there was a level of frustration with the players. We we know that. Like, we, we talked to enough people around the league. There was a level of frustration. What's interesting to me, the Bucks, of course, have a uh, 69.8 win percentage. This is the third highest win percentage at the time of a mid-season head coaching change in NBA history. The 2015-2016 Cavaliers fired David Blatt. They had a 73.2 win percentage. And the 1979-1980 Lakers with Jack McKinney had a 71.4 win percentage. Uh, Now, interestingly enough, McKinney was injured in a bicycling accident, which caused the change. Both those teams went on to win the NBA championship, the 2016 Cavaliers and the 1980 Los Angeles Lakers. This is a team that brought in Dame to win a championship. And so that is the expectation. And I get the feeling I get is certainly that they felt Adrian Griffin was not the right guy to help them win a championship this season. Yeah. When you look at the way the East is loaded up with Boston, how they've played all year uh, and then Miami, and we'll get into the Miami moves this week as well. It just in Philly. I mean, we can't. We certainly can't leave out Philly with those four. It feels like they had to do this just to keep up. Yeah, uh, for sure. I want to talk about Miami in a second. Uh, you brought up some of the defensive stuff, and and look, uh, this is not all on him. There certainly has been some personnel changes. Jay Crowder's been out. The loss of Drew Holiday, um, Damian Lillard is not a great point of attack defender. Let's be honest. Um, but some of these numbers are, are striking. You brought up the defensive efficiency. Fourth last year, 21st this year. Fast break points per game, eighth last year in the league, 23rd this year. Points per direct pick, any pick, third last year, 25th this year. Points per direct drive. This is the striking one, considering they have Lopez and Giannis on their back line. Second in the league last year in points per direct drive, 20th this year. Why? They've got the seventh highest blow-by rate on drives this season. They gave up the lowest percentage last season. And this has been discussed. Right, Adrian Griffin coming from Toronto. They've got the personnel to pressure the ball, to create turnovers. The Bucks have had this scheme for damn near the whole season. Now Lopez, of course, moved back into the drop like normal, but they've had this scheme for the whole season. They haven't had. There's been no improvement on creating turnovers. At some point, they they, they they've been terrible defensively this month. 125 points per game this month. How much of this, though, I'm wondering whether there's going to be more corresponding moves off of this is also just the personnel. When you look at, like you mentioned, Dame, but even guys like Campaign, um, Beasley, Beasley had a great season, but like they're not, these are not def- defense first guards. Right. And so with who you're, who you're going to have to face in the Eastern Conference playoffs, you're going to need to beef that up a little bit. I know they don't have much, many assets to do that, but. Well, I think, I, I mean, I, I said this recently about the Celtics too. It's like the teams that are trying to win, they're always looking to improve their roster. The buyers are always looking to buy. Um, I I would expect every team, every front office to be on the phone, calling people, trying to figure out how do we fill out a roster? We've now got a a large sample size, over half the season now. Teams know what they need. Teams know where their weaknesses are. Uh, The Milwaukee Bucks odds on DraftKings Sportsbook to win a championship. They opened at plus 650. They are currently at plus 475, third best. So despite these defensive struggles, their odds have improved. Conference, being the representative for the Eastern Conference, they opened at plus 250. 
They now are at plus 220, second best to the Boston Celtics. Um, and Giannis, of course, having another MVP-like season, he's got the fifth best odds at plus 1,100. I want to talk briefly about the offense. It's interesting because, you know, Dame hasn't shot the ball well. Um, and he's also simultaneously been incredible in the clutch. And I, I saw this, this uh, interesting thing on Twitter yesterday where it was like, yes, they have a 30 and 13 record, but if you, if you kind of look at how they've won some of these games, it's been Dame in the clutch. They're 30 and 13. They basically are playing like a 26 and 17 team, like the New York Knicks, right? So I think we can all watch the game. It's not about the record. We can watch the game and say, oh, there's clearly some deficiencies there. I, I brought this up very early in the season when they were winning, and I said, look, they've had an easy schedule. They haven't had a true West Coast trip. That's not till uh, right around this time, uh, late in January, where they have a true West Coast trip. They've gone to Texas. They've had a couple games against Western Conference teams at home. They have not had the bulk, the meaty part, the tough part of their schedule yet. And, and you wonder, I, you wonder like these, they struggled against the Pistons twice in the last week. It's like, was that the impetus for this? It, it seems the timing always seems weird with these things when they happen in season. Uh, but this seems particularly odd. Yeah. The Cavs, the Cavs, even though Giannis wasn't playing, the Cavs game was another one like that. I mean, I was going to ask about the offense, you know, what, where this to look to air on the side of positivity for a second, where the uptick has come from besides the three point shooting Giannis is, is, uh, has the highest two-point percentage in the 30-point-per-game season of anybody of all time right now at 64.2%. Uh, is there other other things offensively that you've seen that you feel like, Dame aside, I mean, I think we knew that the second the trade happened. Are there other things that we can look at and say, hey, if they can write this defense a little bit, if they can figure out some of these schemes, okay, this is a team we can really talk about as a Boston threat, as a Philly threat, as a Miami threat? Well, I, you know, I think I think personnel wise, they have had a ton of success in in any really type of pick and roll. So they run some inverted pick and rolls. Giannis is the ball handler. Sometimes he runs it with Brooks. Sometimes he gets a guard screen. Dame, of course, has been really good operating out of pick and rolls. Uh, number one in the league in terms of points per possession, scoring as the pick and roll ball handler across everyone on their team. Right? They they their their ball handlers in pick and roll are scoring more per possession. That's Giannis. That's Dame. They have two of the best players, offensive players in the NBA. If they had a bad offense, <laughs> if they had a bad offense, I would be shocked, right? Um, you know, I, I, I still think the buy-in on the Dame Giannis two-man game at times has been a little clunky. Uh, I'd like to see more and more of that. Um, just spam the fuck out of that all the all day long. A lot of work to be done, I think, primarily on the defensive end. And then, of course, you you start thinking about how are we going to score in the half court. Uh, once the playoff starts, those are the, those are the two concerns for me. Yeah, I was gonna say, before we move to Miami, I was just gonna ask about playoff basketball and if that's a thing where when we're talking about this road trip, but also just like you need this def you need the defense to be tighter as we start to get post All Star. And so if if, if 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 you're not if you're not showing improvement there, I mean something had to be done. Yeah, I know you wanted to talk about Terry Rozier as well. Yeah. Love that trade for Miami. Um, he's had individually. Uh, a fantastic season for the Charlotte Hornets really put up a ton of numbers when LaMelo ball was out. He's a guy that can oscillate in and out of the starting lineup. And there's really no effect on, on kind of what he does as a player. Um, and I think he'll be a good fit. And I think that culture will be great for him. So he's shooting uh, this year, he's shooting 48% on mid range twos. He's shooting 39% on pull up threes, 46% from the field, 36% from three with him and bam. In particular, and maybe even him and Hakez, uh, are there things you feel like this is going to unlock for that offense, which has really been bad recently? It's amazing they've sort of won as much as they have with how bad it's been. <laughs> Again, this is a move you're thinking playoffs, and I think shot creators in the half court in the playoffs are so valuable. Terry Rozier is one of those guys, um, and whether it is a two man game, whether it is isolation, whether it is end of shot clock, right? Terry Rozier can get a shot. And you brought up the shooting numbers. He's shooting the shit out of the ball this year. I think this is a great pickup for the Miami Heat. The NBA season is in full swing. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code JJ. New customers can bet just 5 bucks on the NBA and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code JJ. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. 
In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash basketball for eligibility and deposit restriction terms and responsible gaming resources. All right, so we had originally recorded the intro on Wednesday morning at about 9 a.m. I then recorded uh, some additional content for Islands in the League, our YouTube video series, uh, as we were finishing up recording. Uh, News broke that Doc Rivers uh, has reached an agreement to coach the Milwaukee Bucks. So I wanted to just have a little reaction to that. Uh, First of all, this is fucking insane what's happening. Like, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Adrian Griffin, we went over the numbers. Third winning as coach ever in terms of win percentage to be fired midseason in NBA history. Other two teams, Lakers in 1980, Cavs in 16, go on to win a championship. Ultimately, that's why they're bringing Doc Rivers in. He did win a championship in 2008. And I want to be fair. And I want to be unprejudiced in in sort of my assessment of this move for the Milwaukee Bucks. When you look at the landscape of sort of like who's available, who's available, who's had head coaching experience. We just brought in a rookie rookie coach. It clearly was not working out. The players clearly were not responding to Adrian Griffin in a positive way. They're not going to then go hire an assistant coach. They're not going to promote. This is a team that wants to win now. They want a proven coach. So in that sense, Doc Rivers to the Milwaukee Bucks makes a lot of sense. He makes a lot of sense, for sure, to a certain faction of people. To another faction of people, uh, we can feel a certain way about him as a coach, about him since 2008 and, and what he's done. He certainly won a lot of games, a lot of regular season games. I don't know, I don't think Doc Rivers is the coach that would get this team to a championship. I don't think that. Maybe, based on perimeter personnel, all that thing, defensively, they're they're not going to get there this year. Maybe they add someone at the deadline. Maybe they add someone in buyout, which historically has not worked. Maybe they get there. I don't know. I don't know. Just fucking crazy.